In historical geology, some of the biggest questions deal with the history of life. How has life evolved and changed since it originated on our planet over 3 billion years ago? How has biodiversity varied through time? And what steps brought life to where it is today? What major evolutionary events were necessary to create the world we have now? To address these questions and others, paleontologists study the fossil record. But we know that the fossil record isn't perfect. In fact, it's actually incomplete. Many species are missing. It primarily consists of hard parts and the vast majority of fossils get destroyed before paleontologists can collect and study them. This begs the question, how good is the fossil record? How well does it capture the history of life? And what organisms left behind the most fossils? Recall that we use a classification system called Linnaean taxonomy to name and group taxa together. Using this system, scientists have identified more than 1.4 million species on our planet today. Of these species, over half are insects, about one quarter are other animals, and the rest are plants, fungi, and prokaryotes. Paleontologists, in contrast, have only discovered around 250,000 species in the fossil record thus far. The number keeps growing, but we can be certain that far more than 250,000 species existed on our planet in the past. If we break the fossil record down by taxon, we find that the record has other issues too. Generally speaking, all three domains of life are probably represented by fossils. However, the vast majority of fossils come from just three kingdoms. Animalia, Plantae, and Protista. There are very few fossils of fungi. If we look further at the record, we find that most fossils come from animals. Fossils of plants and protists are not uncommon, but animals are by far the most abundant. Why is this the case? Animals produce large hard parts like bones, shells, and teeth, which stand a much better chance of being fossilized than pieces of plants or protists. Overall, the animal kingdom includes over 35 phyla. But if we look very closely at the fossil record, we see that the vast, vast majority of fossils come from just nine of those 35 phyla. Again, the reason is simple. These nine phyla produce hard body parts that stand the best chance of becoming fossilized. So what are the nine animal phyla that make up the bulk of the fossil record? Porifera is the name of the phylum of sponges. Sponges are the simplest animals and were probably the first animals to originate on Earth. They do not have true tissues, so they don't have nervous, digestive, or circulatory systems. Their bodies consist of only two layers of cells. But with the exception of bath sponges, these animals produce skeletons made of silica and calcium carbonate, which are sometimes preserved as fossils. Phylum cnidaria includes corals, sea anemones, 
jellyfish, and their various relatives. Jellyfish, sea anemones, and the rest have a very poor fossil record, but coral fossils are quite common in rocks of Phanerozoic age. This is because corals are heavy biomineralizers. They produce massive skeletons made of calcium carbonate. These skeletons are the foundations of coral reefs. You may not have heard of bryzoans, and if you saw one, you would probably call it a coral. But the phylum bryozoa is very diverse in the fossil record. Bryzoans are most commonly known as moss animals because they grow on many structures by encrusting them like moss. But unlike moss and like corals, bryzoans produce robust skeletons made of calcium carbonate. Brachiopods look a lot like clams, but they are actually more closely related to the moss animals. Species in the phylum Brachiopoda produce bivalved shells made of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate. Today, brachiopods are somewhat uncommon. You only find them in low energy lagoons and other restricted environments. But during the Paleozoic era, between 541 and 252 million years ago, Brachiopods were some of the most common animals in most marine environments. The phylum Mollusca includes a wide array of different animals, including clams, snails, squid, and octopi, in addition to many other taxa. Clams belong to the class Bivalvia in the phylum Mollusca. Their shells consist of calcium carbonate in the form of the mineral aragonite. Snails and slugs make up the class Gastropoda in the phylum Mollusca. Snails have a great fossil record because like clams, they produce shells made of aragonite. Squid, octopi, and cuttlefish belong to the class Cephalopoda in Mollusca. Unlike other mollusks, these creatures obviously don't have hard shells. And for this reason, there are generally very few fossils of these animals in the fossil record. Nonetheless, there are a number of extinct groups of cephalopods, like ammonites, which did produce massive shells made of aragonite. Although these groups went extinct millions of years ago, they left very extensive and very large fossil records. The phylum Arthropoda includes animals with segmented exoskeletons, which they frequently molt. They include lobsters, insects, shrimp, crabs, spiders, horseshoe crabs, and other similar creatures. They also include trilobites, which went extinct 250 million years ago. Trilobites are the most diverse group of animals in the fossil record that is now extinct. Trilobites produce thick exoskeletons made of calcium carbonate minerals. Echinoderms include starfish, sea urchins, sand dollars, sea lilies, and sea cucumbers. There were also a number of major groups of echinoderms in the Paleozoic era, which are now extinct. With the exception of sea cucumbers, echinoderms produce mineralized skeletons made of calcium carbonate. This makes them highly preservable as fossils. The phylum Chordata includes all animals with vertebrae backbones, and jaws. Sharks and rays, fish, amphibians, snakes, turtles, reptiles, dinosaurs, birds, and mammals. They all belong to this phylum. With the exception of sharks and rays, 
These animals all produce skeletons, bones, and teeth made of calcium phosphate in the form of apatite minerals. Finally, the last major phylum in the fossil record is the phylum hemichordata. Most hemichordates in the fossil record are called graptolites. Graptolites are now extinct, but they were very common in the early Paleozoic when they left an extensive fossil record. Graptolites were colonial worm-like animals. Interestingly enough, graptolites did not produce hard mineralized skeletons. Instead, they produced tough tubes made of collagen and chitin. Overall, all of these groups of animals originated during the Cambrian explosion between 535 and 510 million years ago. All of these phyla have survived to the present, even though groups like graptolites, ammonites, and trilobites have gone extinct. Taken as a whole, it is clear that the fossil record contains some significant biases in the types of organisms that are represented. That said, with a good understanding of these biases, we can adjust our work in paleontology to take advantage of the fossils that we do have.